continuing our visit to Mount Pleasant Primary School in Portland, which is celebrating the 75th anniversary of its founding. We're trying to find out the impact the school has been having with the communities that it serves. Here's one of the past students of the school, Mr. Derek Brown. Well, by the time you reach six, six grade, huh? Six class, yeah. Six, six class. Yeah. What you figured you wanted to do with yourself? In those days, you know, we knew nothing about high school. It wasn't until in the 50s when nationally you're the late, great Norman Manley uh -huh. introduced common entrance that poor people, children could sit an exam and attend high school mm -hmm. if you pass. Mm -hmm. We only school we knew was, in those days we call it elementary school. Yeah. You never heard of Titchfield High we School? We heard of Titchfield and we could only see Titchfield students when we went to Port Antonio. But there wasn't one child in our community here that were attending Titchfield. Yes. You had to have money to go to high school in those yeah, days. Right. If you were a bright student, yeah. you go through first Jamaica local, second yeah. Jamaica local, third Jamaica local before you became qualified. Yes. And if you fail one subject, you fail your exam. Mm -hmm. Start again? You start to all over again. Yeah. You did six subjects in first Jamaica local, seven subjects in second and eight subjects in third. I drop out at the second Jamaica Why local. You drop out I passed my first Jamaica local at age 15. Yeah. And the following year, I became a monitor. In those days we didn't know of education officers. We yeah. called them school inspectors. Right. And my last year in school there was an inspector Edmondson. Mm -hmm. And after school he sent and called me our head teacher. In those days, we didn't say principal, we say head teacher. She came herself and said, Derek, inspector wants you. He congratulated me on my performance for the day mm -hmm. and said, I'm going to make you a monitor for the school. Yes. Mm -hmm. I had to take my classes after devotion and the roll call and things like that. What did you have as a monitor? I, I could teach any subject. Mm -hmm in those days. And I said you were about 15 or 16. At 15 yeah? going 16. Yes. Yeah. You know, I could teach any subject mm -hmm. to almost any of the classes. Yes. We had some cedar trees to the back here. Yeah. They're all gone now. I would take my class out with some benches under the cedar tree. Yeah. And I would do a blackboard and I would teach there. But then I had to drop out of school because my mother died. When I was just nine years old, oh. my father went, got married this following year and did little about me. In spite of me passing an exam, mm -hmm. he, he, he was not a caring father. So I had to stay with my grandmother, my mother mother, yes. and she was the poorest of the poor. She was the what? The poorest of, of the, the poor. poor. Yeah. You know? But she, what kind of influence she had on you? She was a good grandmother, but all she could offer me was like place to sleep, food to eat, whatever it was, yes. you know. Yes. But like shoes, clothing, and you know when you when you are a prefect teaching a class, you got to appear different from your like when you were a student. Yes. Because I never usually wear shoes to school. Uh -huh. Well, not me alone, all of us. Mm -hmm. We came to school barefooted. Yes. You know. Yeah. But then after reaching that level. I remember taking out the school register one day uh, and looking into it and saw my name at the bottom of the staff list. Mm -hmm. You know, it was removed from the student list of names. It was at the bottom of the staff list. Yeah. So I had to make some changes in my appearance. Wear know? shoes and all that. Wear shoes and appear differently. Yes. I couldn't keep up to that. Mm -hmm. I had to drop out. You had to drop out? I had to drop out of school. I, I started up picking up again and come to evening classes. Mm -hmm. I took my second Jamaica local exam. In those days, I had to pay five shillings, which is equivalent to what, 50 cents? Gosh, gosh knows what that means now. <laughs> anyway, yes. I had to pay that for your exam fee. I couldn't find that, mm -hmm. 1950. Mm -hmm. So it was not until the following year, 1951, I could barely be able to go to OBA to take that exam, mm -hmm. and I failed. And I lost interest, mm -hmm. and there was no one to push me, yeah. you know, yeah. to encourage me. Apart from my teacher, Mrs. Kova, mm -hmm. 
I went on to learn a little mechanic trade. Yeah. Learned to drive while there. Got a driver's license on my first test. I drive all manner of vehicles. Yeah including, as I said, fire engines, as being a member of the fire brigade, yeah. ambulances. Then I started to drive a dumper truck yeah. down in Hanover and Westmoreland. Mm -hmm. I did some haulage on the Norman Mandy Boulevard there now, mm -hmm. and some in parts of Hanover Point and Cessnock. And I came back to Kingston, took a GOS test, I passed it, and I went up to the fire station. I had a friend there and told him that I'm going to GOS. And he said they want a driver at the Kingston Fire Brigade. Mm. So I didn't even go back down to GOS at King Street. I went the following morning to York Park. Yeah, which is in, in Half Street? York Park and Orange Street. Orange Street. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then was transferred to the airport. Any, any um, adventures you had out there as a fireman at the airport? One night, the B-25 mm -hmm. aircraft. When it landed, the undercarriage caught fire. I was the ambulance driver that night. I went onto the scene of the fire, and there was a raging fire in the air on the carriage, and there was a foam branch there unattended. Somebody goofed that night, and before the man with the applicator opened the valve, they turned on the cylinder and pressure backed up and burst it. Mm -hmm. So I took up the foam branch mm -hmm. and started to back up the other firemen who were pouring foam on the, on the burning on the carriage. And Anybody was in the plane? There were a pilot and his attendant. Oh boy. And they jumped out and the propeller, it was one of these prop aircraft, yeah. the propeller caught them and they got gashes there. Mr. Alexander, the then airport manager, called out for the ambulance driver. I had to respond and took them to Cape Luridge and came back. You're watching Helen Gully right at Mount Pleasant Primary School in Portland, which is celebrating the 75th anniversary of its founder. We've been talking to one of the past students, Mr. Derek Brown. So tell, what do you feel about your Mount Pleasant School now? In our the earlier days, this school was the number one school in the community. Yes. There was a school in Rockall, Maidstone, and St. Margaret's Bay. Mm -hmm. But children would come from those districts to come to Mount Pleasant School. As far as Snow Hill, they pass St. Margaret's Bay School and come up the hill to Mount Pleasant School. And those were the days when you walked to school. Yeah. Everybody wanted their children to come to Mount Pleasant School. Okay. My wife also became a principal here. Your, your wife? My wife, yeah. Uh -huh. yeah. yeah. She isn't from here. Uh -huh. I met her in Kingston. So. I had children here. One of my daughters taught at Titchfield after mm -hmm. college. I really wasn't born here. I was born in Port Antonio. Okay, what's your full name though? Kathleen Vanilla. Quiet, quiet, quiet there. Kathleen Vanilla? Vanilla. Oh, Vanilla. <laughs> and you were born in uh, Port Antonio? Yes. Then, um... My mother died when I was only 18 months old. Uh-huh. When I, um, started to go to school, mm -hmm. he married, it was, um, then seven years old. Uh -huh. And his wife died shortly after. She had a baby, and when the baby was three months old, she died too. So I, I thought it was two mothers, and I always say, oh, my two mama dead. <laughs> 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 and anyhow, they left me up at um, Windsor Forest, the place. Um, Windsor was, Forest? Yes, Windsor Forest. I remember my father used to buy octagon soap and thing, you know. Then he s would send the labels up, uh, and they send on all 62 pieces of crockery, you know, different shapes. And yeah. he said that he couldn't bear to see them and his wife, you know, is not alive to use them. And he sent them up to um, Windsor Forest. And when I was a little over seven, I then um, they sent me up there. And the lady, which was her one of our sister, she treated me very bad. They gave me the place to wash. And I was washing, and the one in my hand, it dropped, and it broke. 
She beat me, she beat me, she beat me. Mm -hmm. And I ran away from her and go down to her cousin. She always buy boiled coconut oil to sell at Port to the market. Mm -hmm. And cousin, we call her Cousin Rosie. And when I run away from, um, from Aunt Willel, and I go down there, she used to wear some big frock. And when um, she saw me come and hear her at the gate, she put me hand on it. At that time, I was suffocating on that year, but I couldn't come out to take the beat. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> no beat. Cousin Rosie used to wear some big, huge frocks with wide skirts going all the way down to the ground, and she hid Kathleen under the frock, where Kathleen almost suffocated. And she said, uh, Cousin Rosie, you see Kathleen come down here? She said, no, I don't see her. What happened? And she telling her, I said, me break the plate. Oh, she beat me, and if she ever catch me, mm -hmm. she go and kill me with beat. Oh, God. And Cousin Rosie said to me after she gone, I said, you know, me not try and send you back um, up there, you know, because she might beat you so till something happened to you. Mm -hmm. And the same drudging frock when we run down there with is hit. Cousin Rosie wash out and put a little piece of jiffy jaffa hat on my head and said to my father, important when he was a postman then. And he always has set up every month, my father um, gave out a basket like that and about this size. And he would put gross at the time you get um, the long, the cake of the bar of brown soap, mm -hmm. the bar of white and the bar of blue. Mm -hmm. You know, and he would buy some of the other, and his, at the time, cursing oil was sold in the tin. And I could remember the Saturday morning when she took me down to tell she my who? father. And she who? Uh, Cousin Rosie, uh -huh. for she was coming to the market with yeah. her oil to sell. Mm -hmm. And then now she said and tell my father must meet me out at the cenotaph. And when my father saw me crying, 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 because he used to send up clothes, make clothes, bra cloth, shoes and socks and other things, and they give dear children to me and never give me any. My father took me back. I used to love read, mm -hmm. but at that time, I didn't have anybody to teach me. We used to live up um, Summerstone. Mm -hmm. And he sent me to um, to school afterward. I had to wear buttons, a button side boot because I walk on tip. Mm -hmm. And somebody advised him to um, to make me wear the boots and go to school. I went to Teachfield Elementary. Mm -hmm. So uh, at what stage did you come down to Mount Pleasant then? No, I came down, I came up at Mount Pleasant through love, sir. So my husband was from up here. Uh -huh. And he went to the same school. He attended the same Mount Pleasant school. Uh -huh. When holidays near to school reopening, I and a sister, sister Lola, we used to come out here, clean up the school and wash and all of those things. And I got a certificate from the education minister. Mm -hmm. Yes. And I used to come out here I had, when I had um, children and come to my school and find out if they are behaving all right and I always get good report. Yes. This land was my uncle in law, the land was belonged to, mm -hmm. by the name of Mr. John Brown. Mm -hmm. Children used to go to Rock Hall, um, St. Margaret's Bay Maidstone, and they said that it was very difficult. And there was a little man in this community um, by the name of Mr. Hazel Bunting. And he wrote to the Ministry of Education to, that he would need a school here. And then it, it passed. And then they see this bit of land from Mr. John Brown in 1937. They got it to buy. Right back where we are now? Yes, sir. Uh -huh. And then uh, they, they start the school 1937 and this plot of land. 37? Yes, sir. Okay. And it finished 1938. Yes. And it opened in 1938. Mm -hmm. And the, Mr. John Brown, that sold the land, died this very year, 1937 as well, mm -hmm. after he sold the land. Mrs. Cova was the first teacher that came here. Mm -hmm. She was very, a very good teacher. Everybody respected her, and she was very strict. And in the, in the war days, they, they, um, they called school at 8 o'clock, mm -hmm. call it daylight saving time. Mm -hmm. 
-hmm. And if you are late in there at all, you will be getting spanking. Mm -hmm. Like there was a room over there, she would lock up all the late children in there. What? Like children have to come from content, yeah. um, food full veil, a place they call Bone Ridge, mm -hmm. and different places far out. And if they late in there at all, they have to get spanking and for that reason they, they don't try to come in until <laughs> lunch time. After lunch time they will come in yes. in the half day school. <laughs> she has students that was look they go over whips and you can't get away from the licks at all. Yeah. Anywhere you are she will try to look you up as long as you are nearby in the community to find out why you are not in school. Yeah. Watching Hirangari Ride at Mount Pleasant Primary School in Portland, which is celebrating its 75th anniversary. We've been talking with past student Mr. Anderson, who has been telling us about Miss Cover, one of the head teachers. Miss Cover used to beat them for the least, and she loved beating. We had a student here, especially in those days, we call, we, we call him Hayan. Mm -hmm. It come like no, it didn't worry him. And Mrs. Cobra don't care how she put out effort to beat that boy with that boy, but they wouldn't cry. They would give him the name Hayan. Mm -hmm. There was a maroon chap who used to come to school here, and he couldn't read well, so Mrs. Cobra always sent him to look the guava whip on this same property here. I remember at one time he screwed the guava whips, and every time Mrs. Cobra picked up the whip to <laughs> flog the child, it break. break. So she didn't consider what it was until one of the time three of the whips break and when she take a key in what the whip screw and she give him a proper flogging that day. <laughs> yes. And from that the chap never come back to school. Oh poor fellow. <laughs> and what what happened to Ian? Ian he he was here until he left school. He, his right name was Leopold Anderson. He went to England. And he came home and he died a few years ago. He came home back? He came home back from England and then he died. Yeah. I wonder what was going on inside Ayan when people were beating him like that and he didn't cry. Uh, what no. was operating <coughs> in his mind, do you think? You, you see, the thing about it, I, I more believe that he was ashamed yes. to cry. But you know, sir? Yeah. It must have been a terrible ordeal for Ayan. Yes. To be beaten like that. Yes. Sir. And to decide not to start I want was. It was a shame to oh cry. God. I believe it was a shame to well, cry. But whatever the reason. <laughs> Poor Ayan. To be beaten like that with a guava switch and to make up his mind just not to cry. So you never saw Ayan when he came back to Jimmy Yes, sir. I saw him. He came to look for me. And uh, uh, I heard that he took sick and died afterwards, not long afterwards. Hi, I'm Alfred Patterson. Yes, sir. I was born in this district. Yeah. My mother and my father separated. Uh -huh. And so she took me with her and we were living at Maystown. As my mother was very poor and, and my father was so neglectful, I had was to help her in the field. The, the field work. Yes. And so I became a very hard farmer. Mm -hmm. I grew up as a hard farmer, work partnership with men. I used to keep company with the whole of men who could advise me. Yes. And so I work along with the man that used to love me. Mm -hmm. And about, about 20 of us was working partner together. Yes. And I was the youngest among them. Cut bush, mm -hmm. dig ground, plant food, sell banana, cane, cocoa, dasheen, potato, corn, yeah. peas, and so forth. Yeah. We sell them to the, at the market. Mm -hmm. Right? And we used to raise animal. Yeah. We raise pig, Cow. we raise Cow and goat, mm. and we have been thanking to take me load to the mark to the um, market and so forth. Yeah. So I, w I was a very hard farmer, mm -hmm. and even up to now I have a good farming mind too. Oh yes. I was born in the year 1916. Yes. This month I am strictly 97 years of age. Yes. Myself and my heart and dear went to the same school at Milton. She attended the same clue. School at Maytown. Mm -hmm. He was a very ambitious fellow too. He grew up, he, he, I mean, he used to raise the bees, the bees farming, mm -hmm. and he used to cultivate a lot too. Yes. So at least I never knew that he had reached this, such a tender stage. Mm -hmm. So I can give a lot about him. I can't tell a lot about him because we were schoolmates together. What about him? He was a very 
upright gentleman, I mean, fellow at school. He was very active and so forth. He never made no trouble. And after he leave school, he do farming and we do beans farming and do other farming and so forth. So he was very ambitious. Most of us are so walk to the market. To yeah. so where Eight market. miles from here to Port Antonio. Eight miles. Yes, and we are still walking. Barefoot or what? Barefoot. Barefoot. <laughs> because when the hawks fall hot on us, we have to take Barefoot. the road corner and would carry our butter pan and a bigger piece of house at the ice factory mm -hmm. where the GPS offices there was the ice factory yeah. and they would get a piece of house there and they would get a little sugar but they would walk in groups you see yeah. and big amount of us walk together right. and we get a piece of house and share the ice we get a, a share, share, make sugar <laughs> and water with the same wet sugar with a little lime and all that and we share it with each other and we walk come down quite jolly. Mm -hmm. Eight miles go, eight miles come back. Yes. And they come as nothing to us, barefooted mm -hmm. and the hot spot burning us but we didn't have no other option. Yes. How old were you at the time? That time I was about nine years in those. Boy, yeah, but just a boy. Yeah, just a boy. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. You see? And we have to take it because we didn't have any other option. What Port Antonio was like in those days? Port Antonio really wasn't developed like but now. But the market was there. And the market was there. And the market still developed towards where they had on to it to yes. and all that, you know. Yes. But it's much more better than those days because yes. You the people have to carry the bees to the market, they tie them up and they mess up the place and it, you know it smells bad, but yeah. no, it's not like that. Yeah. People hardly raise bees again, it's mostly <laughs> cars and, and all that you have around the place now. Yeah. You see, things was cheap, but we couldn't wear shoes those time, although things was cheap. The <laughs> parents couldn't afford it because my father was a carpenter. Yeah. I used to work with his whole box of tool all <laughs> at Norwich to build houses and I M E work on the school year as well. Yeah. To help build it and it was working barefoot. You see almost everybody walk barefoot though they say didn't come you didn't yeah, feel yes, aware yes, about it because everybody doing the same thing. Mm -hmm. But those days when you see a child walk where a crepe come to school, the white crepe. That parents, you could say that person could afford it. Mm -hmm. yeah, I just be for mm -hmm. children yes. coming to school. Well, sometimes when inspection there, they, they might try to booze up the, a child to see if they can wear a crepe to school. But as you go, we may have to take it off. <laughs> but you know, I believe those days was very good days. Yes, you know? Good days. Yes. 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 Because yes. you would find cheap. people try to work for themselves and you didn't have a, a lot of teeth those no. times. Yes. Everybody tried to help themselves. Mm -hmm. You see, but things change a lot. Yes. I can remember television came to Jamaica one year after independence. Am I right? Yes, 1963. 1963. Mm -hmm. Every fire station in the corporate area got a television set. Mm -hmm. Television usually sign on at around 4 o'clock in the evenings. And we all would gather in the recreation room around that television. Mm -hmm. And one evening when the GIS program came on, I heard the presenter said, and now we will have the quadrille group from mm. Mount Pleasant oh. in Portland. <laughs> and I said, what? And I drove my chair right to the screen. Yeah. I was like, the sergeant and the corporal, they come like they were my subordinates that mm. afternoon, mm. I tell you, sir. Mm. I was so happy, because yeah. I was able to go up to the screen and point out everyone that was in that quadrille group and right. called their name right. to my co-workers. Yes. I felt so bossy that evening, I tell you. That, that's this, a that's under the guidance of the same Mrs. Mrs. Scope. Yes. yes, but that's a wonderful memory, sir. Yes. Mm. Not many people can remember those early days. Yes, I, re I, I remember that quite vividly. Sir. Television, yeah. Yes. <laughs>
1960, I went on the farm work program. Yes. The first time, it was three years a, a, a sign contract for us. Mm. And there was a white man wanted wanted me was to break the contract and stay in the country. I said, no. So he made television and fixed television. He said, boy, I'll teach you this trade. I said, well, we haven't got television in Jamaica. He said, boy, they used to come and have it in your bedroom. <laughs> and it was true. And I, I was very scared. I tell him I would really break the contract. And I stay until I reach the time to come home. Well, we had a long, extended visit to Mount Pleasant Primary School in Portland, where we talked with teachers and with old students about their association with the school over the past 75 years. We were particularly touched by the tales of the old students about the times when they were subjected to harsh beatings for little or nothing, just the same as other students throughout the length and breadth of Jamaica. And how difficult it was in those old days of long walks, barefoot walks for most of them, and of helping out their elders in the field in those economically lean times. We learned a lot about the Mount Pleasant community and about the school itself from the early times of chalk and blackboard to the present moment when they're struggling to try to get computers to help to train the students. But it's now time for us to depart and to go uphill. <laughs> Thank you for watching Hill and Gully Bride.